Hello and welcome to the Lost Rewatch. The Lost Rewatch continues. Uh, unfortunately, today you're only going to see, see my ugly face, uh, Sam, who's over in the UK. Uh, we couldn't get him to. Uh, it, it just it's just not working, and I can't help it because I don't know anything about technology. But uh, how's it going, Sam? Other than the uh, fact we can't see you. Hi there. Um, good, thank you. Um, and I was just saying um, before we began, in true spirit of Lost. Uh, my nature will be a mystery, <laughs> my, my <laughs> mystery. Um, but I am calling in from the UK um, here to just join along on the ride. I've uh, been following along so far and thought it'd be good to just share my thoughts. Uh, I'm a big fan of the show and um, just kind of wanted to chime in and see what everyone else was thinking on the episodes so far. Well, you, you, you always give very interesting comments in the mm. uh, comment section, well thought mm. out and looked like, no, nah, I... I didn't, you know, it was one, I think it was the last week. I go, well, I didn't even think about that. So mm -hmm. all these years, you still have people coming up with theories and thoughts that you didn't even think about. That's why, that's why I'm having a good time doing this because every week it's somebody different for the most part. And we all have, it, it lost is one of those shows where everybody has a different opinion on it. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, I've met so many people who still to this day uh, are kind of having ideas thrown at them that they never even thought of. I was talking to someone the other day regarding something in season five, talking about Jughead. And I said, oh, but I never thought that the bomb went off. And they were like, no, I always thought it had gone off. So people have these conceived notions right to the very last episode and years since they've got certain things in stone in their head. And then someone, yeah. someone can just come along and be like, no, I, I interpret it completely differently. Uh, and that's why it's great to either in person or kind of find what I found here with, with your rewatch, just a new place to share ideas and see other people's ideas. It can it can be changed even years after having watched it. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's almost 10 years since it went off the air. Yeah. We're a few, few months away from 10 year, 10 year anniversary from it going off the air and people are still coming up with theories. Yeah. And, so, and you're like, going, how, how is this possible? Yeah, and, and, it, it, and it's one of those things you can't say they're wrong. No, no, you can't. I've also seen a large uptick recently of people doing rewatches and filming their reactions, I would say, in the last year and a bit. Um, so it's kind of found its new place there in sort of YouTubers and other people that are kind of wanting to rewatch it. Um, right. I do feel like it's one of those shows that would have benefited from being dumped on a streaming service and just binge watched. And that's how a lot of people are doing these rewatches. Um, it, it's kind of, it, it works so well in the old network format, um, but it, it kind of lost people along the way, I think, because it had that week to week wait. Uh, and I'm seeing so many people just getting their teeth into it, just binging through it and loving it. So it would be interesting to think, to see uh, if it had been kind of made now and you know, released one season at a time on a platform um, where the people would have you know gotten to the very end of it uh, and you know completed the journey because I think a lot of people really did enjoy it the early seasons, but I just look, I think a lot of people didn't have the patience. Uh, no, that's that's definitely long, true. There's long awaited answers, um, and I know a lot of people that love the characters, but still, it, it was just a lot of waiting that, that, that people stopped watching for. So. Yeah, it's cool to see it's getting a new life and people are binging it and finding it again. So, who knows? That's interesting you said about the binging because most people, because like I've always said, I like to, why well, podcast, I was doing a podcast with it and I was, you know, it was one of those shows where I, I'd actually watch two or three times, sometimes four times if it was like, you know, before cause we, we did two, we did two shows a week, once right after the episode and then one on Saturday or Sunday when we mm. got all the listener feedback. And I, I don't think I could have, well, I don't think there's any way I could have podcast with it, with it streaming because it, even doing this rewatch, I have to yeah. stop at two episodes. And it's like, it's like on this one after abandoned, I didn't want to stop. I wanted to go to the next episode, but I go, yeah. I can't because I get too confused. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I think you're going to like always have people wanting to, you know, the big, big shows that everyone's talking about in pop culture and they're getting the most hits they're going to want to be consumed as fast as possible. But these shows like Lost or, you know, any classic cult show, I think that has a dedicated fan base. We're always going to be all right with there being a week, a week's worth wait. Um, right. We're just a bit more eggheaded and, you know, <laughs> every single little second, whereas a lot of 
audiences might not care for it. Um, right. I mean, I think Lost benefited from both. It had the week to week break for people to do that kind of egg headed fun. But I do think it it always had a sort of a marketable quality to all sorts of audiences. And it had, you know, like the, the characters and the shipping, like it, it really, it kind of appealed to so many at levels. Um, I would say in its final seasons, it definitely became a lot more genre and sci-fi and fantasy. But I think by that point, people were so invested with the characters from those early seasons that they kind of just stuck along anyway. And they right. might have rolled their eyes at things, but they were just like, well, I just need to see it anyway. Um, but yeah, I do know some people that love the first seasons, never finished it. I'm like, you should have finished it. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I couldn't imagine not finishing it. No, I think they just like the, the 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 grounded, realistic qualities of those first seasons before they kind of un they pulled back the hood to the almost mystical elements, um, right. which is quite it's quite interesting. I was reading a kind of go off tangent here, but was reading that the original outline had included you know, elements of fantasy in the sort of the original pitch, but the network ABC were like, mm, we don't want that. We want to make this more grounded Michael Crichton, Jurassic Park style sci-fi. Right. You know, something that's believable science, less less hokey pokey stuff. Um, it's just kind of what they just were like, yeah, we'll do that for, for a while and then we'll get to what we want to do. <laughs> so <laughs> I think they just did it just to kind of make sure they got the, the green light. But their plan had always been, I think, to kind of go in a very uh, metaphysical, fantastical direction, which is in the end what they did. So I, I always think, I respect the, the fact that they stuck true to their intentions, even if people thought it, it Yeah, I, I, I appreciate they did too, because they, they, they had a plan and they stuck, like you said, they stuck with it. Mm -hmm. It didn't, you know, uh, and of course, Lindelof, you know, they, he said, look, we need to end this. This, need, this can't go yeah. on forever. Yeah. And I'm glad he did that. Yeah, definitely. As much as I missed it and, and messed the show, I'm glad I, I'm glad it didn't go on for like 10 years, 11 years, where they just kind of dragged out the story and it because you would have lost more people. Yeah, I'm glad they just got to kind of make it their own. Yeah, they, they were up against the network who wanted to drag it till it died. Um, there's a whole other conversation in here. There's specific episodes and later seasons that are a great evidence of that. And <laughs> I'll leave that conversation to then <laughs> for other people to talk to. But yeah, you can see evidence of where they were starting to wear thin. <laughs> well, how did they you, how you go ahead. tell? There's so many good episodes. Even a slightly stinker of a lost episode is still good. But you know, oh yeah. I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. How did you get how did you get into Lost? Okay, so I first experience loss i saw promos for it in the uk um and it was the first of its kind they were advertising it in the cinema going to see you know big blockbuster films this oh really big came up um and it was a, it was shot by a guy called david la chapelle and it was back end of the day lost was on terrestrial uh, network so anyone could watch it uh, they didn't have to have a you know extra provider to to watch it um so the first two seasons were on channel four um, and the original marketing for it was very cinematic as the show looked um, but it was unusual to have a tv series especially an american one uh in a you know a uk cinema being shown in like a trailer in the middle of a cinema for right. a big i can't remember what film it was but you don't usually get that and i, I think that was a quite big big first sign that whatever you were going to watch and sign up for when you, you tuned in to watch Lost was going to be something quite special. So that was my first uh, experience of it. It was, uh, and I still like go and watch that little promo because it is so um, like artistic and uh, it doesn't even like resemble what the show looks like. It, it's, it's very trippy and weird, but it kind of sells. Is that the one where they're all on the beach? They're all yeah. on the beach? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I've seen that one. Yeah, and it has the tagline of one of us has a secret, one of us is a cop. And it, you know, it tells like that's the kind of premise of the show is this mystery of these characters. And it has a dreaminess quality, which makes right. it feel a bit in Wonderland. So you get the, 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 the show's going to be a little bit weird in a way. But when you watch <laughs> the show, it's a plane crash, it's very realistic, it's not this sort of very strange style they did in the promo. But that was my first experience of it. And I was like, this, this looks interesting. I recognized Dominic Monaghan from Lord of the Rings. Right. 
Um, and besides that, I just thought it looked like it had an amazing production quality and it hooked me from the fight, like the first two episodes. And I've still not seen a pilot in other big shows that has hooked me in the same way Lost did. I always, oh, no. yeah, no way. It's a high bar every time I start a new season. Like, is it going to get me? Like, most shows tend to pull you gradually, but Lost just bit me within the first, I think it was by the end of the second one when they had the, the French signal that I was. I was like, no, this is going to be a, a I'm in for this. <laughs> uh, I can't leave until I know the answers. <laughs> How far was Lost, but was Lost just a week behind when you when we first started, or was it a few months? Because I know a lot of times I'll watch a show from from over the from overseas, and it's like six months behind when I finally get a chance to watch it. Right, that's a good question, and I I should know this. I think we were a year behind, so it wow. began in season four. I don't think we got it into channel for maybe maximum year. Maybe it was like um, like maybe it was like six, seven, several months or up to three quarters of a year before it finally kind of. But I mean, I know it had been a bit a big hit, and they probably been trying to get it over here. Um, right. It was not spoiled in any way. Like no, I mean, I, I've never heard of anyone having seen or watched it on the American. TV or found it online anywhere before they watched it on, you know, UK network here. Um, it didn't ruin it, even if it was, you know, a max year behind. Um, but as soon as it was out, um, I do remember that when it got to season three, I think, and it moved from channel four onto um, Sky, which was not a terrestrial channel. That I think is when it was at the same time as uh, the American series, so you can okay. be up to date and not be spoiled if you went online. Um, it's so long ago now, though. <laughs> yeah, it has been a while because I know we had. Because I'm trying to remember because we had we started podcasting about Lost in the second season, and so mm. but I know towards the I we had listeners from all over the world. Because mm. they would call in, and it was you know they from from everywhere. So it had to be where it eventually got to a point where either people were able to get a hold of it, or that every, all the other countries said, "Hey, we need to start showing this this show as current as we can." Yeah, yeah. Like it really amazes me actually that I hadn't been spoiled in any time before that. I knew there was always ways to find things. I, I just was so sat on enjoying the show at the pace that they designed it that I avoided things. But um, I mean, even here, they created a whole world and slew of um, interactive external experiences to the show in the same way I think they did in America. I think Channel 4 did a great job on like the website design of like, I think they had that with the, what's it called? The, the fuselage.com was, I don't know who or whose involvement is with, with that, but that was, I know, an American uh, thing. And I don't know if they had that the same here in the UK, but Channel 4 did their own kind I think, of- I think, they, I think they did. I remember there was another, there was one from UK. Mm, mm. There, was a se there was a separate one. I Cause I would go check uh, you know, especially when Lost was, you know, in hiatus for six, seven months, I would go check all the different sites. In fact, I got spoiled a couple of times from checking different sites, but wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to get spoiled. It just happened. But um, yeah, um, yeah. But you just got to be careful, you know, obviously what you go on. But uh, yeah, it's just it's a great show. And it's like I said, it's a show that everybody around the world loves. Yeah. I mean, the show is it, it really was a microcosm of the world in a way. It was these international people thrown together on an island. And right. that sort of bunch of people that represented, you know, people from the States, from Australia, from the UK to Korea, it, it kind of, it captured many people's eyes. And I think there's nothing more appealing than mystery uh, to everyone. I think that always catches and the sort of the idea of the unknown and you know, the classical themes that the show explores, I think that's why it captured everyone's imagination more than anything. Right. I think it really just was limitless in its possibilities. You know, you could just just throw them into this unknown position and there was no there was no um limits on what they could do or couldn't do. Um so yeah, they must have had a lot of fun in writing it. But um I can also see <laughs> Because there was no limits, why people got the idea that people thought 
they, they were making it all up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's hard for me to this day because I I can't say they could they weren't. You know what I mean? There's no evidence of it, but you can kind of see that they also doing so much good work that you're like, I can't believe that they would be. <laughs> I, I never understood that criticism though, that they were making up as they go along. Who cares? I mean, if, if even if they I mean I think they had yeah. I think they had a a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it's yes. you know, the filler stuff in between, but you know they they could see how a character took because Echo was supposed to you know be more a more important role, but the actor didn't want to be in Hawaii anymore. Yeah. So so they had to change that all around, you know, because he didn't want to be there anymore. And then you know they had other issues. So yeah, of course sometimes they had to make things up as they went along because they have. What do you do? You, 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 you can't make up. You can't make it unless he's under contract. You can't make him stay. So yeah, yeah. No. I never do doesn't really they don't really like pilots that have a ending basically built into them most right. you know are meant to work week to week but the problem with lost was it was set out as a show that's a plane crash so with a story about a plane crash the idea is that there's going to be a rescue at some point that's just like a part right. of, of plot so there was always a baked in ending to it that's why people expected there to be an ending and why they were really mad at the idea that it would be made up as they went along because it, it wasn't a show that would work in that fashion. And yet they had to find a way to make it last season to season until right. the network. Yes, we can give you your ending. So I think people's complaint and worry that they made it up as they went along is just because that's how every other major series does work. If it's a procedural right. drama, if it's, you know, um, you know, in a hospital is a different, crisis every week they can just make new stories up every single episode every season but lost could never work like that they found a way to make it work um you know with a, a large supply of characters and a, an island which could hold innumerable threats so they can always come up with stories but the idea of there being a middle and an end at the end being either them getting rescued and what does that look like or if they don't get rescued why would they not right. that ending had to happen so i think that complaint always just comes out of the fact that people are smart and uh, people don't want to be led on for a ride and the network was going to do that <laughs> to a certain degree <laughs> so if there's anyone to get mad at i think it would have been the network uh for yeah, because the, the network always uh, the network for I, I don't know about in the uk but here we used to complain they would show previews and mm. it was it was spoilers it's like well why are you showing me that but yeah. and, and, and and i know lindelof and Coos used to say it's not us it's the network yeah. and that we have no control yeah. over what they're, what they're doing, how they promote, how they promote the show for their network. Yeah. I mean, you need them and they do a lot of good stuff, but there are just things now and then that I guess they just have to say, fine, this is our baby, but you're the one that's putting out there to the world so that everyone can enjoy it. So they'll make some mistakes, but yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I just get mad at the, the writers. I'm like, I wouldn't be mad at them. It's no, just no. part of the nature of television. <laughs> I forgot to mention too, Michael Emerson was only supposed to be on six episodes. Mm. He was so yeah. popular that they, yeah. they, they kept him around. So are we going to be mad because they made that up as they went along? Yeah. So, and, uh, it, and I heard that the part of um, Echo was kind of largely what the material they had for his character, which was going to be a major character was going to be part of what Desmond had with Charlie and also a lot of the stuff that Ben had with Locke. Right. I wonder whether Echo might have been a a foil to Locke. Well, he already was. You know, Locke's the main guy of faith. He was the ultimate guy the, who would have been the protector and Echo would have been the sort of second man. Um, right. But I wonder whether that, but if, if Echo hadn't died, he always had a very dark past, made a lot like Ben but whether they would have made Echo's arc on the island that he would have potentially become evil again. Like Ben had the flip-flopping good and evil. Oh, they've that's done true. That Echo. Yeah, good point. They, they, they took a lot of the themes and ideas that the, they were going to use with Echo and gave it to Ben. So I wonder whether that's what we might have seen because he already was a very shady character. Right. Um, it would have been interesting, but uh, that's it. We couldn't get it because it's just how television works. And I'm I'm glad we got Ben for that story because he oh was yeah, such amazing, a fantastic amazing actor. actor. Yeah. Well, we we, we want to start with Anne Anne Found. Yeah, sure. 
I, you know, the, this, this episode, these episodes always were hard because you, you're trying to take notes, but they're speaking Korean and you need to read the captions. So it's like, I know I messed a lot of stuff. <laughs> Cause you're, I'm writing notes. I go, wait, they just moved on to something else. They moved yeah. on. These episodes were always a little tough, but uh, um, I, I, I know a lot of people don't like the Sun and Jin episodes. I really enjoyed this one. I don't know about you, but I enjoy, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think it's a it's a solid episode. Um, I've got per, I've got personal favorites of Jin and Sun. Um, this is on my lower side, but it's still right. a good a, you know a good uh, a good hour of fleshing out more of their backstory, how they met at least, and, and like the idea of the class disparity between the two. Um, and yeah, like it just adds a little more color and the stuff on the island as always was a good way of just kind of re-examining their, I think their re-finding of their love basically is what right. the episode is about because the first season was always about how their marriage was falling apart and right. it reached its ultimate low by the end of the season. I felt like this season they wanted to start from scratch again, um, at, like what the show is about is starting over. So they they did a good thing by separating Sun and Jin to show that when they came back together, that they obviously, they were willing to make it work. So it was quite a good, interesting episode for the first time to see them apart and their stories in the past where they were, part, were apart before they'd met each other and why they need to have each other um, was what the backstory was about. And then her finding the ring was her refinding. Okay, right. okay, yes, I did. I did need him. I I wasn't happy with him, but I'm missing him and I couldn't be without him is kind of the resolution, I feel. Which happens a lot in real life. I mean, yeah. I've, been, I've been married a long time. I can tell you there's been, it's been there's times it's like a roller coaster. So, yeah. <laughs> but I, I do like how the fact when it starts out, you kind of think they're going on a date to get, you, you think they're both getting ready to, they're dating mm. already. And then you find yeah. out, no, it's not. Cause once the mom comes in and she's like, Oh no, no, you got to do this. She goes, well, it, that can't be for Jin. Mm, mm, yeah. Yeah. And again, classic rock loft. They, they know what you're expecting. So they flip on its head and, and that's just what keeps it special. <laughs> you yeah. don't want to do everything predictable. So, yeah, the, it's cool to see the bit before them being, before it all kind of went right and went wrong at the same time, you know, with their marriage. Um, right. I, it also goes to the idea as well, the theme of fate and, and coincidence and how they met. Um, you know, Sun was kind of meant to be with a perfect suitor, but she just stumbles into, you know, bumps into Jin. So it kind of touches on those other themes which they're building along the side. Uh, you know, we've got Locke being a fantastic main character that speaks destiny and free will. Right. But on a character level with Sun and Jin, where their themes are more to do with love and, you know, sort of trust and marital issues, but they do weave in these extra themes that are being built and more fleshed out with other characters. They do sort of sprinkle them into show um, how even with characters of Sun and Jin with separate stories, there are elements of free will and fate and destiny, you know, happening. What I like about Jin is because in the beginning, he, we don't like him. Mm. You know, he, he comes across, I mean, I, and then it's suddenly you start seeing his backstory and how he, how he, how they ended up getting married, how he had to work for her dad. Mm. And I always felt, I always felt bad for him because he was just doing what the, her dad wanted him to do right yeah and i always felt like i go she's not being i don't, I didn't think she was being fair because mm -hmm. his, it's her dad he, he he's he's only reason only reason they had they got married is because he agreed to work for him yeah yeah so it's just again like they're taking what your perception is and knowing that there's so much more to the story uh under the surface son being what seems to be a woman in a abusive relationship. Well, this episode starts to show actually she you know she's got a pretty well off background and you know for all intents and purposes she 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 could have done something you know more than she was doing you know from what we see here. Um, so it it starts to shift the goalposts a little bit in how we perceive the two. It right. used to be 
a very abusive one-sided power dynamic in the first season. And I think here is where they wanted to build out A, you know, that the two of them were in love and the island is going to be where they're going to refine that love. But B, maybe the problems that we thought they were facing in the first season, maybe there's actually more problems still kind of to come. Now we're changing the, the, the perspective on who they are. Yeah. Um, yeah, we don't know a lot about Sun, actually. And no. so she, she's an interesting one at this point because all we think of her is that sort of, we feel sorry for her, but now we're starting to feel sorry for Jin because we were feeling horrible. We, we, we didn't like him and almost we're like getting mad at ourselves for hating someone. Yeah, <laughs> uh, exactly. They, they, they work on that. That's again, they do that with Shannon. They do it with all the characters. Right. You know? There's a lot of characters that we start out not liking. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, ah, oh, you know, I was wrong. I, I, I judged too quickly. Yeah. But, you know, we were just going by what they were showing us. And but Jin was, you know, he, he, I think he was had one of the biggest swings, I think, because I really didn't like him at first. And then it towards the end, he was one of my favorite characters on yeah. the show. So yeah. they did a great job at points in the whole show, though, to always have moments to remind us of who he used to be. I think is right. in the episode of the season, he has a tantrum with Sun or makes a few comments. It's always like these people are complicated. You know, it's not just that uh, he was trapped and he just had to do it for her. No, he he does have a bad temper. He does get really overprotective. You know, right. so they did a good job in not making them so, you know, it wasn't just about perspective and, you know, all the sort of the ways that we perceived it. It was a combination of that and the situation, the circumstances and their faults all combined made for a, a really, you know, perfect storm. Um, and I do think, yeah, Jin does have his faults. I don't think he is an angel. Like none of them are. No. Um, he does on the whole start to become better as the show goes on, as they all do. Um, and that's why, that's why it's a good show. <laughs> you you got to give him, you got to give him credit though, for taking a job where the guy's insulting him the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting choice. I mean, it's just like he, he he wants to improve. He wants to get, he doesn't want to be a fisherman. He wants to, you know, move up the, the ladder. And yeah. I, I just, I don't know if if someone's putting me down like that, I'm going to take the job. But I guess if you want to, I guess that's just the way the system is. So I guess you have to do what you have to do, but yeah. I, I was, I wanted Jen to punch him in the face, but that's just, <laughs> that's just me. But I, I do like that we and the second the the, the backup story that was not even a backup story. You have Anna Lucia telling, okay, we got because you have Jen and uh, Sawyer and and uh, Michael don't know what's going on. They come over, okay, we're gonna go and Anna Lucia has, has this way about her where it just do it my way, do it my way, do it my way. And a lot of people don't like that. But when we see the backstory, like when we see another forty eight, was it the other forty eight days or something like that? Yeah. When we start seeing her backstory and what she went through and what they went through, you can kind of understand why she was the way she was. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I'm gonna be honest, like I felt like after season one of Lost, um, I kind of got what they were doing. I didn't ever have like really big shocks that when they revealed certain things, like characters being more complicated down the line, it it didn't blow. Like, I know some people got like completely had to rethink. Okay, I I always was feeling that they were going to go there with characters. So my <laughs> my my predisposition with characters that were seeming so unlikable, like Anna Lucia. Right. Um, I think by this point, yeah, season one, I kind of took a whole season for me to get to grips with how they were doing the stuff. So I didn't really enjoy Shannon. I didn't really enjoy Jin for most of season one, but. Season two, when Shannon came, uh, sorry, when uh, Anna Lucia came in as gun, like gun blazing, not literally, but kind of, you know, figuratively with her personality, I kind of was like, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait here because she's so unlikable. I can't believe the shoving her into the main cast. Just, you know, other than for causing conflict, there's going to be some interesting story behind her here. So... I, it didn't ruin it when we did find out certain things about characters later on. Every time they had characters come in that were very flawed and unlikable, like Juliet. I love Juliet from the beginning. Right. I loved her from the beginning. I love all the characters that most people hate <laughs> because I just can tell that they're going to make them really, really complicated and nuanced. 
And so I actually did enjoy New- Anna Lucia from the beginning. And I know a lot of people hated her. I know I'm in the minority. Um, people, people still, people still hate her. I know, and I can't say you're wrong because there's a lot of things I don't think you would want to meet a person like that with. But it's the idea of the show is I enjoy her as a character, not as a person. That's the difference. Um, and I enjoy what the show's saying about people and. So there's different levels you can enjoy. I definitely enjoy the show is, as a storytelling thing, as opposed to whose personality would I like to sit on with a bus. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I get that. People get, you know, I think people get very into the show and believe it's very real. So that's why they dislike and love characters. <laughs> and I, I've always just been like, no, they're not real. They're fictional things, just like exploring ideas about society and humanity. So. And Lucia was just fascinating cutout of someone who seemed very aggressive, but probably had a lot of pain and baggage, which was basically all the characters. So right. I always enjoyed her. But I, I think the way she was acting, when you're thrust into the leader leadership role, and yeah. people, people are that you've you, that you're trying to protect are being taken and being killed, mm-hmm. I think that changes you. Oh God, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you can. I don't know how you can. So, couldn't be different totally totally she was on her own in a way no one else it's been like Jack, everyone just looked to her to lead and again right. she was like okay i i can i can't say you're wrong for doing it because i do have the best skills and the most qualified for taking care of the situation at hand but i don't think like like jack she didn't want to do it no um and it was a good it was a good thing to do to have the tailies come in uh, while i think they were still way ahead of getting a midpoint in their overall plot line uh, from the network. I think they needed to kind of show a different side to what our main t- survivors could have become. You know, if it was, if they were on the other side of the island, just by chance, the others picked them, picked on them more randomly. Right. <laughs> but it, it, and it, and what the impact would have been on Jack or Locke had it, things been different. And, and we'll never know that. I mean, would, would Jack have maybe gone as, bonkers as she was starting to go we don't know but it was cool to see what things could have been at least you know with those power struggles how they might have been different. well even jack at the end of season one was becoming very demanding mm, exactly. i mean i mean i i've always been a lock at times drives me crazy but he he jack had just become it's my way or the highway almost like anna lucia yeah 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 no Anna Lucia was, in a way, a again, a, a foil to Jack, the way that Echo was to Locke. And she represented a lot of his worst tendencies, like really, if you think about it, as well as Echo, I think, brought, represented Locke's best qualities, because Echo didn't really do a lot of really hasty, selfish things on the island. No. He had the faith and spirituality that Locke had, but he didn't have all the, the selfish, the selfishness, the secretness that Locke had. Right. And I feel like Anna Lucia also had a lot of Jack's, you know, kind of bullheadedness. Um, all of the flaws were just kind of magnified with her. And I think that's just down to the quality of the writing. They they make these feel like real people, but they're also specifically used as constructs within the story to kind of comment on other characters that are already main characters. And you just think more deeply about the ones that are clearly in the the long haul of the journey, like Jack or Locke or someone. Um, I, they could have been there for the whole thing, and Lucia Echo. But yeah, they were they were interesting for what they added while they were there. <laughs> I, I do like how Jack. He still doesn't have bedside manner because he comes up to Sun. Sun's distraught because she can't find her ring. You got to be thinking on this island, unless you have a metal detector, you're not going to be able to find it. And yeah. so Jack comes up and go, tells a story about he, how he lost his ring and da da da, and in the end he goes, she goes, well, what did you do? He goes, well, I just had a dupe that made. I go, well, that, I go, that was kind of a crappy story, Jack. Yeah, <laughs> she can't go. To, there's no jeweler, jeweler on the the island. She, I go, yeah. he just sometimes doesn't doesn't yeah. get it. Like he, you know, he, there was a whole full episode dedicated to him and his bedside manner. He just doesn't. That's why they're so good because they're thinking as they're crafting a sort of a whole episode about Sun and, you know, fleshing her out, really, because this is the one chance they get in the season. But still, they're doing work on Jack's character there. You know, that's just right. good. 
you're seeing that he really does stick with the bad, the bad bedside manner. And I don't right. realize that he's doing it. I think he's, no. he, he's, he's kind of laughing and having a good time. And I, I, I've never thought about it in that way. I always thought that scene was just kind of light and hey, he's not mean anything bad by it. But yeah, on another level, he, he's not thinking really like, actually, no. it kind of come at this from a different angle and say something really, I don't know, inspiring. But he's just like, oh, it's fine. That's life. Let's laugh about yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he was, he's oblivious to the uh, yeah the real, the real world. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, and his own sort of well, he doesn't care anymore because he was divorced. It's a story to him. He doesn't have, he doesn't want to think about it anymore. Yeah, right. It's interesting. I've never thought of that, but that's what we're talking because there's so many things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, there's just so many things. That, in fact, I never <laughs> thought about it until I watched it this last time. I go, well, that was kind of crappy of Jack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this show. And I've seen this, I've seen this episode probably a hundred times, but I I never really thought about it until I was watching. It. But then I like the scene between Anna Lucia. You got it's Anna Lucia and Bernard and Jen. They're all fishing, but Jen's off on his own, and Anna Lucia is being Anna Lucia. You want to come help us? You know, yeah. you want to eat? She's like this, and he's like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, that just I mean, it's the language barrier, but it's also just how he's been treated to that moment. Right. I think. Um, so I can't blame him. <laughs> well, even so even Sawyer says, no, you're gonna want to take him. He he can catch fish. Yeah. Even after Sawyer told her, she still was that's where her, her character was she needs to back off a little bit too. I know she's she, again, she's under a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. But if you don't know how to fish, someone says they know how to fish, let that person, you know, provide you the food. Yeah. The fish. Yeah, yeah. She just had a lot of work to do. Yeah, she's, but I, again, she, I know she's she's worried. She wants to get out of there. She wants to go. You know, sure. she's got a lot. She's got a lot on her mind. Um, yeah. And then I, but I, I like how I think you mentioned earlier how the two different, you know, the Tailies and right. and and uh, the our Losties had two different experiences on the island so far. Yeah. Because yeah. they're they're t Libby and they're just terrified. And Michael's like, a, what are you afraid of? Mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he can't understand it because we don't know you know they started with 23 and there's what five or six left up top yeah. of here. so yeah. obviously something bad's happened and because they, they, they keep saying what happened to you sure so i, I yeah do, i do like how two different two different uh experiences yeah and other than it just makes for a nice juicy mystery and interesting plot for season two I think it also just really kind of goes back to stuff that comes back further down the line in the later seasons when they talk about Jacob and the man in black and the candidates and, oh, what about all the other lives that you've ruined, you know, on the plane? Were they candidates? It kind of goes back to that. Like, right. there's how many of the main cast, like our main losties, Shannon, Boone, Michael, Walt, all of those guys and our main season crew, I think they were always considered to be what Jacob wanted to be his his leaders, his potentials. Obviously, right. we lost them over the course of the show. So, but but what about the Tailies? Was it only those few? Libby, Anna Lucia, Echo? Were they? It's like it goes back to that idea which they they do weave weave around to again at the end. That you know Jacob had a plan, but it it was flawed, and like he didn't really think about the lives of all the other people. And there was twenty three people in the back section, and what was it? Four of them were potential candidates. Is that it? Right. You just didn't care. Um, and it was how a, it was a, was a lot of the, a lot of those people died. Yeah, there's a lot of collateral damage, and it, there were the chosen what is it? Fourteen of our main characters. Well, and then four additional ones turned up, of which two or three of them die anyway. And right. we only have maybe one of them, but Bernard, for like the rest of the whole show. Okay, that's the show writers. But it's also like the idea that Jacob picks them out, like, you know, who were the special characters that he wanted. Right. Um, it just goes back to like the idea that, okay, he did have a, a, a good plan in mind and a nice reason for bringing them there. But there were just loads of other people that just got killed along the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's always been, it's always been my argument because I've argued with people. I said Jacob's not a good guy. Hmm. I said he brought people to the island. They they died. A lot of them died in tragic ways. I mean, it wasn't just yeah. it wasn't it was painful deaths. I mean, so oh. I don't think Jacob is this no. loving, caring guy. But a lot of people disagree with me. I, they'll go around. And I go. Yeah. I go. I don't know how you can say. I, again, 
I don't want to fight with people, but I just I don't see how you can see it the other way. But I totally agree. With you. The show was, and the show was about finding the right leader, and Jacob wasn't it. That's why he knew yeah. he wanted someone else to take his place because he he felt like it just been shoved in his direction. That's what we eventually find out, right. and he felt like the only way for there to be a right leader with all this power was to let kind of the hands of fate take place and the right, right person will step up and take it. They will choose it. And that was never met Jacob. Jacob, I think, just was cornered into it. So no, he didn't make right decisions, but I don't think you can expect that from someone who's just forced to take that position. Right. Um, and that's why he, when he had the choice of who he could pick, he wanted to find someone who would want it and right. who would do that right thing which turned out to be hurley or jack i i always think it was always meant to be hurley right i think jack became w elbowed into it because he realized he'd let lock down basically right i think i commented that the other day i never believed that actually truly became a man of faith in that deep sense like lock had i was just i think jack was always really depressed and lonely and just felt like the only thing he had left, I think he says it, was the island and the time he had there where he felt he had some kind of purpose. Um, and that's why I think he kind of doesn't mind dying in the end when he got the stab wound. He kind of gives up in a way and he just, you know. I think he's at peace at that point. I think so. I feel like he's got nothing. I feel like he has nothing left to live, which is kind of what's so tragic about it. He, he really just, I think he's in a way that like sense that his purpose was fulfilled um but he could have survived you just don't know <laughs> it is, it's tragedy, but yeah who knows <clears throat> anyway then we then we have we have uh, libby comes running back because she pointed out the others and michael takes off and i thought it was a pretty good scene between Jin and sawyer because sawyer's like i ain't doing it chewy I, I, it's every man for himself whereas Jin is being the stand-up guy again. That's why I think, that, again, like you said earlier, his character is becoming more and more positive. We we love him every, even more because it's it's who he is. He's a very loyal person. Yeah, yeah. And we've seen that's what his strengths are. His, his biggest strengths have been his downfall, and that's him being so overprotective of Sun. Right. Uh, now that he's become more integral to other parts of the community and building Help the Raft, friends with Sawyer, friends with Michael, those strengths, which were seen as down, like downsides are now really are seen as strengths. So it's just change, shifting the the optics on, on his character. And now we're seeing the good, the good things out of it. Because um, before uh, he started helping Michael with the rap, there's no way he would have gone out and, and trying to find Michael. No, no. So they, they, they got that bond. Whereas yeah. you know, before they were fighting and, all the different stuff that was going on they didn't they hated each other well i think it was always jealousy and suspicion and distrust and i i could it went back to the very beginning of the show michael was building a connection to sun and i mean at this point sun didn't have a really a friend in Jin anymore so no the, she seemed warm to him and therefore Jin seemed very very hostile um so it it, it was Good thing that almost like the raft got burnt and then he got accused and Sun revealed her speaking English. It just got it all out in the air so that, you know, they could start over again. And Right. You know. I do like the scene where uh, Jen hits, hits Echo <laughs> and Echo hits back. I go, that's yeah. a mistake. That's a mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good moment. Good moment. <laughs> there's, certain, there's certain people you just don't, you just don't swing on. And I, <laughs> Echo's one of them. Really but, Echo, but Echo goes with Jen. Yes, yes, yeah. That, I, I would just go back to the thing about Echo as a kind of formidable fo force as a character. If we if we had stuck around, I would have loved to have seen him. You know, like go to I don't know, part like toe to toe with like someone like Kimi or like right. just you know, they were they could have had some really good like scenes with uh, him if he'd become a big big character because not only was this spiritual kind of character a bit like Locke but he he was a bit like a, a big player like a Jack or a Sawyer or a yeah. Saeed like he could have been a real part of the A-team and it would have been cool to see a guy a main character like that but was also trying to be you know the island protector whereas Locke would be maybe a little more 
quasi philosoph philosophical about things, Echo would have had a different approach. They could have made a really cool character out of right. Echo. It's a shame we lost him, but never but mind. I, what I think is great about Echo is I, I think most people, I know, I know I, I loved his character right away. I mean, just, there was so much going on. Yeah. And when, when we finally see his backstory, we're like going, if we would have known his backstory first, <laughs> would we have been so, would we have loved the character? Mm, yeah, he, he just had such a presence to him. He didn't even say much, but he, right. he just had this sense of, I want to know who this guy is. <laughs> yeah. He really did. And, yeah, it really came down to that moment in his episode, which comes later when the the monster confronts him. It didn't surprise me the way he held his ground because he did hold his ground like that with everyone. Right. Um, so, yeah, there was he had, no, he had no fear. Yeah, I remember seeing Michael Emerson, who played Ben, talk. That someone asked him on a panel once, "If you could choose to play a character that wasn't Ben, who would you pick?" And he said, "Mr. Echo." He said, because yeah. Mr. Echo just had this incredible presence that was sort of in his own world compared to all the other Losties, all the main characters. And it's really true. And I, I respect that coming from Michael Emerson because I feel like he's probably one of the smartest guys on the cast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, de definitely, definitely, definitely. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Well, what I, what I like about Echo is, is Analysia needs him. Mm. She's she says she grounds she he grounds her where you know he kind of keeps her and and she's upset when he leaves. We're not waiting for you. you yeah, know, yeah, she's yeah. you're gonna because again she said it later on when uh, that might be the next episode, but uh, maybe I'll wait because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here. I like the Hurley and the, the Hurley and uh, Sun scene where they're waiting for Vincent to take a, a go yeah. to the bathroom and get the ring, <laughs> ring back. Yeah. And son's like, this ain't working. Maybe I don't want the ring back after that. <laughs> yeah. And then you have the whole Jin opens the door for 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 uh, son, but he doesn't see her because he's he's bowing. Um, but it was. Uh, but then I, what shocked me was going back to the island thing where Jin gets taken out by the boar. Yes, I, I thought he'd be a little at this point. You know, a little more island savvy. Yeah, Unless you, you, I, I'm trying, but I'm trying to remember too. Is did he ever see a boar? I don't know than, him, him interact with one now. <laughs> so maybe maybe that was it. But I was like going, why is he getting taken out by a boar? Yeah, so, yeah. I, I feel like a bit like that. This is an episode that meanders a little bit. Just, but it doesn't bother me. But I can see people complaining of that. The 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 middle bit with Echo and him going through, and like the the bumping into the boar. I feel like it's just things happening. Like right. if, when we get to finding Michael, please. If this was a season four episode, they'd set off. They'd like have that moment in the underbrush of seeing the others walk by quick, and then they'd move yeah. on. Like just things like that to me. I'm like, there's not even much to say there. It just feels like they're finding ways to drag the episode out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then we 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 see Mr. Lee for the first time, and it won't be the last time we see him. No, no. Yeah. That's at this true. point, at this point, we think we're done with him. But um, mm. we're not. Yeah, I'm sorry. I like when the son and Jen, uh, son and Locke are talking, and she goes, "I've never seen you angry." And the mm. episode before is where we see John has got anger management. He's he's very angry. You know, he's lost his kidney. He's, he's been used by everybody under the sun. But on the island, he hasn't been, other than screaming at the. Uh, I've I've done everything you wanted me to do. Yeah. You know, the hatch. He has been. He is pretty calm. Well, that's what everyone thinks, obviously, but he is still pretty mad in his head at the. Oh world. yeah, he's definitely he's definitely got the anger issues, but yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's a great scene, and the the one thing I'll say on that, if if you were gonna move on before we do, is the line he says to her. Obviously, um, it pertains to the show. Um, we're talking about the lost ring and right. You know, Finding it. Um, this was a thing like I I would like when people ask me, or oh, what's what's lost about, or you can tell me like what's the kind of story. I said like just like I would find that scene and clip and I'd show it because it was just felt like it summed the show up. Like right. the little not cheesy, but it's a bit on the nose. But it, it just is. It's what the show is. Is these characters just are looking out in the world for some purpose and 
No, then, and even when they do get away from the island and they go back, they're still looking and can't find it. It's it's right. in a case of like they needed to be completely stripped free of luxury of society um, and really get stranded and lost to actually see what they're looking for and that it's right in front of them. So I do think that scene with Lot and Sun is the heart of the episode and it is a big part of what the show is about. So when people say, oh, this is a slow Sun and Jin sort of episode or, or other episodes that are slower, similar to this one, right. I'm always like, let's just dig down into the context, into the dialogue of the scenes. And I'm sure there's a conversation in there somewhere that will in time, by the end of the whole six seasons, you'll go, I get it. They were right. dropping the clues in here. And that was a definite clue to the theme of, of what they're wanting to make the whole story be. Um, and it coming from Locke means a lot more because he's he's speaking about himself. Yeah. You know, he's, he used to be angry and he's he literally says he's not lost anymore. Well, that's what we find out in the very end of end of season six when he looks back on his life. He he does see that his life was made better by the island, you know, oh, yeah. as people do. But it took them all several seasons to eventually realize that for God's sake. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is quite funny. Well, I, I did say, uh, I don't know if it's, Last time, somewhere during this rewatch, I said Locke was the one that benefited most from the island. I think because he got he got a second chance at life. He didn't he didn't necessarily take advantage of it, but I think it it he was he just uh, he realized uh, it. He was yeah. the only one. I think um, Man in Black says that when he's talking to Ben in the beginning of season six, he says. Locke was the only one that actually realized how pitiful that his life was. The others didn't. They all wanted to leave, but they were actually there because their lives were so sad and they're all desperate trying to leave, but Locke knew it. So yeah, I right. think he was the one that benefited the most because he, he just got to sit back and enjoy it for what it was. There were obviously a lot of, you know, things that went on along the way that were quite dramatic and not yeah. easy. But but for the most part, I, I feel he looked out onto the scene at hand and He's like the, the way they are in the, the church at the very end. I feel like he probably sat back on the beach and thought of them like that. He didn't think of them yeah. in a rush to get away. He was like, This is a family of people that I feel happy I couldn't leave now. Whereas I feel like they were all in that moment desperate to get away, but they didn't realize what was special in front of them, which is that's part of the journey. That's life. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent point. Uh, I do like this part with Mr. Lee because Sun obviously has is attracted to him. I think. Yeah. I think she she likes him. They get along good, and he tells you, yeah, "In six months, I'm going to go uh, to Amer go back to America and marry the girl I met at Harvard." And you can see her face is like, hmm. "What? What?" And right. you know, she leaves disappointed. He's like, "What?" I think he thought that they both were not connecting. That yeah. maybe they were just friends, but she, I think she she cared about him. Yeah, yeah, I I would say so too, and I think he I think he did for her as well, but as a friend. Um, so yeah, it sets it sets something up for later. We don't know that obviously it's setting something up. We just think oh, this is an interesting little snippet. Um, but it's interesting to know that it is setting it up in hindsight that this is the right. beginnings of of another of another way in which she might be happy or happier than she was with Jim. So. It's important that she does like him because that will right. pay off. Yeah. Uh, I, I, then we have, I, I think it's a great, well, also brought a lot of theories because you have, they find a footprint. And and, and Echo says, it's Michael's because the others don't leave mark footprints. <laughs> and I was like, I go, so that was the whole, oh, my garage is opening. So if you hear a noise out there, it's my garage opening. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I just thought that was, it. I remember that. Why don't they leave footprints? Are they are they superhuman? Because you because you remember seeing uh, Ethan, mm. he always seems superhuman. This so is the thing they were doing a very big job again in this this part of the show before I think they had an ending to make the others as big as threat they could make because I right. don't think they wanted to go near the monster, uh, the idea of the candidates, any of that end game big, big bad big bad in the plot they had to find a way to keep the, the tension the conflict still really rife when when you look at the others in the grand scheme of the plot of the whole thing of lost 
they're just a bunch of guys on an island right. being driven right. and told what to do by Ben or Richard or Lidmore or eventually Locke or whoever. They aren't superhuman. So I feel like these scenes now in hindsight are they've got like they've lost their magic. I think in first time viewing, you're like, oh they're aliens. Oh they're superhuman. <laughs> I, I think now I'm like okay they're just humans and they're just super super OCD and methodical about covering their tracks like to the perfect degree you know uh, it also makes me go how are they doing that if they are just human but I'll I will go along with it I will go along with it um, <laughs> well there is a scene like you said that they're just human because we see yeah. a young boy we don't see his face but we see a young boy dragging a teddy bear yeah so yeah. they're they're telling us Okay, yeah, we're we're giving you some mystery, but they're just human. Yeah, yeah, they 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 they're, they're not that special, which is what I kind of like about it. In the end, <laughs> it's like at the end of the day, they're just they're just a bunch of people, right? And fear, and you know, all sorts of things makes people do crazy stuff, and being told you're know, doing it for the sake of saving the world, or. Yeah, it, uh, it is crazy uh, that they're just a bunch of people, but they kind of come across as these terrifying things. Um, well, what we find out yeah. later on, they're wearing costumes. There, you know, they're yeah. It, it's a whole the whole the show. parade that they're doing. I do like the scene where the young boy. At, at, we're outside where Jin's the the doorman, and he's the young boy has to use the bathroom. Dad's pleading with him. He goes, "I can't let Jin. I can't let Jin." Well, he lets him go to the bathroom, and then the his boss comes out, and Jin goes, "Yeah, I'm out of here. I quit." Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like he he doesn't stand for it, and it'd be the same for it shows his like not he's not got a fear of authority. He's got a, a moral compass. He'll do what he thinks is right, and that's what's makes him such an interesting character for the fact he becomes henchman and like sells his soul in a Faustian deal to to the devil and working for son's father because we know you know from this bit of backstory that he he doesn't have a, a fear of standing up to higher power right you know, even gonna get him in a higher place the only reason he does it is his love of son and right. that's it and i think <laughs> he wants to try and prove son's father the wrong maybe and maybe change him who knows but yeah well he also didn't invite his dad to the wedding so he, yeah. yeah he he's yeah. He's, he, he's doing so much to impress son and mm. you know, son's dad that he you know he's but like you said that's a good point he did he had no problem standing up to authority no he, he no. did it he and, need to before he you know he just will eventually step back when he needs to yeah you know, and this thing with his father was the thing we we saw it was a big thing of shame and guilt and he felt awfully for it and right. it's, while it didn't use him for doing it in the first place I do think he is trying to trying to get a bit further ahead um yeah so yeah he has, he has goals of being you know more than like I said it just a fisherman nothing thing wrong being a fisherman but but he didn't want to be that um son and Kate talk about the thing they find the bottle and the whole thing yeah. Uh, yeah. Analyst did tell Sawyer, if you can't keep, you, you can't keep us, can't slow us down, we're going to leave you behind. She's just, yeah. she, she's going to dump him. Yeah. And yeah, it's, that's the interesting thing with Sawyer. I, I just kind of forget that that's actually, and, and I've watched some people on a rewatch or watching it for the first time and how that seems like such a big life and death situation. It didn't bother me the first time I watched it. I was like, Sawyer's not going to die. So no. is fine. Uh, <laughs> I, I should have been more worried because Sawyer was such an unlikable character. It wouldn't be shocking if they did kill him off, you know? No, but I always seen him a lovable rogue character that was so funny, full of conflict, and he was a great, um, you know, it was a love interest to Kate. He was a kind of a great um, character to bounce Jack off. So I was like, he's not dying. <laughs> this plus, whole plus, this worry he, and this... Go ahead. Oh, I was like, nah. Plus, he had a heart. Yeah, it just didn't bother me. Yeah, he did. He, he did have a heart, and when yeah. you when you find out his backstory, again, it's it's almost like we we you go to the backstory. He's like, oh man, I I feel bad for not liking him. I mean, but he's he did everything on the island to he wanted to bring everyone down to his level. He wanted everyone just to be miserable like him. But you you see yeah. his backstory, you go, God, I mean, how do you recover from something like that? 
So you kind of you kind of expect it, and it's like you're. But then you're also like, well, Anna, why is Anna Lucia yelling at our Sawyer? That's our Sawyer. We we like him. Um, uh, Echo and Jen yeah. stop for water. Uh, Michael, but Michael shows up, tells them to go back. Of course, Jen falls uh, after Michael. Um, of course, Michael's screaming, Walt, Walt, mm. Walt, Walt, Walt. <laughs> Echo tells Michael to yeah. not stop yeah. screaming. I think this is the point I think everyone was trying to really get pissed off with Michael. Um, and <laughs> I, I'm still on the fence with where they wanted to take his character because he's, he's the only one of our sort of main cast that really kind of gets the shaft at the end of the, the six seasons. I, I and it kind of... The, the the six yeah and and the it kind of starts here and it really you know gets spirals and further down and later in the season and I I just can't believe that they would want to um and I don't know and I'm, I'm trying I my closest I thought is that they want to have an example of a character who didn't achieve redemption who didn't find themselves with that community who effectively you know the mantra of live together die alone who did try to do it alone who did try to just take care of himself and his closest family member which is kind of what his story showed um you know they all had a choice on the island and for the most part actually for 90 percent all of them kind of came through for each other and that's why we see most of them in the church but michael's the one that really just gets like i said gets the shaft and I I don't think they just trash his character because he has some kind of completion in season four, but it it does I, I find it hard to watch his stuff in season two because it's just sad. It's like this is not gonna lead to any nice place. Well when you see it, like you, you go back to his backstory, I always go back to the backstories because they're so important. He basically had his son taken away from him. Susan was yeah. I, I said Susan was horrible. I, I, I don't, she should be up there with all the terrible people on the lot because she, she used her power and her money to take, to take, I mean, he didn't want, he didn't want Walt to go away. Yeah. 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 No, so that's, that's why he's so obsessed on the island. And what's so tragic is that where on the island, most people's stories have some kind of like a, a leaf being turned over. I think his thing with him losing his son and his backstory, it just happens again. Like literally, they gets the son ripped from his hands. Uh, right. What's it adrift? The episode earlier, it's showing the court case of his mother taking, of uh, Walt's mother taking him away from Michael. Right. And then on the island, he's shouting, my son's been taken, my son's been taken. So it's the same struggle again, but a million times worse now because it's a complete, weird band of people we don't know anything about so it feels to me like the island he was one of the like the other people that just got killed off and like just he he maybe wasn't meant to be a candidate i don't know or maybe it was walt and michael is a tragic example of a main character who we get to see just not actually complete some kind of good ending that most of the others did um maybe walt should never have been brought to the island because that was the thing. He was a he was a boy. Like, why bring Walt? You know, maybe he was special, but Jacob just was like, no, he should come. It, it kind of was again short sighted of him to bring a child there, even if he was special, because at the end of the day, the others took him and they thought he was special. So I don't know. There's there's something a kind of their storyline doesn't fit with all the other main ones, and it always bothers me. I'm always trying to find a reason why they're there. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I forgot. So much. Why? My, what was the point of suffering? He definitely got a raw deal, though. I mean, it, yeah. I, I, it always bugged That's the one one of the if you, list of things that bothered me at the end, Michael getting a raw deal. I mean, I know Even, he I, I know he shot Libby, and I know he shot Anna Lucia, uh, but a lot of Ben killed people. I mean, there was a lot of people that killed people on the, you know. Yeah. It was, so. it was one of the great pieces of writing and exploring the gray area. Cause I've seen so many people watch the episode and other people have talked to you. Everyone's on that. So many sides of that debate. Was that right? Was it wrong? Everyone knows it's wrong, but so many people, how they feel about it is so many people feel so different. I think it's one of the most interesting moments in the series when it comes yeah, to it. I agree with you. 
definitely the most debated to today, like I still think. And I think that's great that he gave us that, but it just means that we, that it, he's, he's, he's just constantly in this corner of the room where no one can decide on him. I just feel sad for him <laughs> in the story. Like they made him a whisper, goes on the island. That just sums it up. Like Why there is he- where was he with? I just, I, just, I, just thought it was, I thought it was wrong. But I know that, like you said, there's people that say, no, he got what he deserved. Yeah. I go, all the bad things everyone did on that island, he's. Anyway. Yeah. I think because he, not so he killed Anna Lucia, I think because he killed Libby. I, th- I think because people liked Libby. So maybe that's yeah. what, what the fans have. But anyway, we go back to Kate and Son. They, they dig up the bomb. And then Kate mm. starts reading the messages. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. And, and, she, and son goes, they're private, Kate. And she goes, well, <laughs> he didn't say goodbye. Yeah. And did she yeah. really know he was going to write a note in there for her saying goodbye? Yeah, no, it's true. It is interesting. She does so many things that I, I always liked her, but. I, when you I watch other people react to the episodes, or like you just point out, it's kind of like that's a bit. Hmm, really? <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, she does just really think of herself, number one, all the time. I and somehow I think it's the actress that just she charms me like somehow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there you go. It's interesting. She's well, I know, me. I know. I I defended the first time around. I defended. I was a Kate def- uh, apologist. I defended her all the time. Then I kept watching again. I go. Ooh, okay, now I see what people are talking about. I yeah, still don't think she's the worst person in the world, but again, that's just a selfish move. Yeah, you, you, you can't be reading other people's notes. But anyway, they did find the they did find the ring. She goes, "Well, son, there's your ring." And yeah. There and then it ends with the uh, Jin checking out another woman, and then he bumps uh-huh. into Sun. Yeah, and it's the orange because earlier yeah. in the episode we mentioned right. we'll see and then it's not Sun, but. Leads yeah. Him. yeah, he yeah. smiles, gives this look, and then turns around, bumps into Sun, and then the rest is history. Yeah, and it's going to the theme of that he was looking for something, but even not meant to find that, it's actually what he wasn't looking for. It's who he found. So it's what well, the whole thing. Up. If he didn't quit his job, he would have never probably yeah. have met her. Yeah. It's just such good, right? Is that, that that was already like stated earlier, Locke said it, and then it actually becomes how the story is closed. So I was also going to mention like the interesting thing. Um, I'm a big fan of Chikino, Michael Chikino that does the music. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I love his score for the show, um, and I love his way of doing it. He does, you know, all the different themes for characters, um, for different emotional things or situations. Um, this was the first episode. I know this is a kind of nerdy thing to pick up on <laughs> but uh, it's the first one we get the love theme between Sun and Jin which you hear oh yeah you're right you're right so it's a theme that's kind of you just slips in and you hear it throughout the show and you wouldn't have noticed but it it makes a big change because in the first season it's it's pretty much just like a like an Asian flavored um instrument playing the main theme um and they don't really have kind of a specific I don't know, a connection at that point. So of all the characters, they all get different love themes um, and separate motifs. So it kind of made sense that when we get their story of how they met and on the island, they're pining for each other for the first time in the show that we get the love theme because it makes sense at this point. Now they're wanting to come back together. So we need a musical theme to show their like healing relationship and it continues throughout the show but it's interesting you never hear it in season one it just reflects the fact that there wasn't a lot of warmth between them basically no. <laughs> uh, that's, a great, and that's it, a great point i didn't think i didn't think about that yeah it's just uh, that's why it's there's so many layers to this show you know uh yeah. there's there's what you see on screen there's the story there's the literary references the themes and then there's the music underneath it and the music's pretty much doing everything that the story's doing, but in a different way. So um, there's so much more you can always see. <laughs> they didn't they didn't go cheap on anything on this this show. The music is no. amazing, the writing, the directing, the actors. It's cinematic. Uh, it, it just it's just perfect. It's just perfect yeah, TV. Watched, 
Yeah, I've watched so many shows that have a very TV sounding score, and this was the first show that I wouldn't. Have, it just never phased me, and I it felt like a film, but it was right. over hours and hours. And I, it's, it's the reason I kept watching. It was like, like there's nothing else out there like this on a visual production level, on a scope, and on an on a on a music level that is so rich and textured with so many themes. And it feels like it's written by like John Williams. I guess does, right. does, does, this is not a normal TV score. There's not a lot of use of electronics. This is live orchestra. It's such a dying art, even in film. So the fact that they continued with the one composer over 120 episodes, right? it's incredible. It really is. I mean, what sh like you're saying, what show would do that? I don't think you'd get one today. And if you do, yeah. I know a lot of shows do have, you know, incredible music. Uh, there's definitely shows out there, but um, this was the first of its kind. And I don't know whether there are many like this still, or if it's going to continue for, for much longer. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't say it's dying, but it, it, this was a special one for sure. Well, I think <clears throat> it's something when networks would go, okay, wh where can we cut the cost? All right, just put in some, yeah. just to put some canned music in there. But this sure. this show is like you know Locke being so valuable to the show and and Sawyer and all the different well so, so is the music. Totally. It, it, it wouldn't make it, the show wouldn't be as special without the music. Oh yeah, I mean it's all that said Locke the theme of Locke's when he's pounding on the hatch. Yeah, this just sounds so oh it it gives you chills hearing it. It's like something out of a, an opera from like centuries ago. It feels. Like it's part of history. It's a beautifully classically written piece of music. So it's it's what makes the show so special. Is the sound is it's you know it's not cheap. It's not <laughs> they didn't uh, you know you know it wasn't no expense. It was no expense spared. In fact, right. really. Um, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm glad they they did that. But moving on to abandon uh, this, I'll just yeah. say up front this this is. Probably Sh obviously Sh Maggie Grace's best episode on on the show. Yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely. What a way! To, what a way to go out. Yeah, she didn't have a, a centric episode just about her before. This was her only one. Yeah. It's just. But, it's, uh, it's yeah, it's sad. <laughs> I mean, this episode makes me so sad, but it's it an is, interesting it, one. It is a sad episode, and you feel again. You see her backstory. Yeah. You go, like, oh man, I you know she had a she had a, a rough time too. Yeah, I mean, she yeah. lost her dad. I mean, because you got Shannon and Said are, are they're becoming a great couple. He's built this nice little hotel room for her, I called it. Um, he he's in love with her, and then this is what I've always said. You know, should he have gone in the church? Should he have gone with Shannon, or should he have gone with uh, um, Nadia? And I always was on the Nadia side. But the more you see this, you go, I can see why they went with uh, Shannon. Yeah, I, I, I feel there's so many different things here. So I feel personally, and I, I think I said it before on a comment, I do think that that Saeed did love Nadia more. I'm not going to hold down from that. I think he he wanted her more than anything before the island, and when he found her after the island. And when he lost her and she died, I don't think there's anyone he pined for more right. than, uh, than Nadia. I really, but that's why I think he didn't move on with her because I feel like it's that kind of love we've all had in our lives that's made us so sad, that's made us, you know, I think everyone's had that in their life, you know, and it's never worked out. But there's someone that, that, that just you work with that doesn't, you know, you don't deify in your head. It's just another person. It's flawed. They have, you know, bad things in their lives like you. And luck happens that you just meet at the right time, at the right place, fall into the right kind of conversations, and things are flowing nicely. Now, I don't personally think that at this point, Saeed, when he says he loves her, I think he does, but I don't think he's really fully lived a life with her yet. No, that's I, de definitely so this is why I feel so sad about this episode is because I think he's saying that with the intent of wanting to fully back that up. Right. What's so sad is he doesn't get the chance. <laughs> it no. really does. And he could have gone on to 
have a meaningful, long-lasting relationship like he had with, or wanted to have with Nadia, Nadia. but it just wasn't going to happen. Um, the lead they had was they had someone who, for a split second, who was like a complete redeemer, like a mirror to the to each other. And it was literally a split second. We we didn't get much long of them at, we could say, the peak of their relationship. And I think it could have gone further. I think they could have really developed the two of them beautifully. They were at a really interesting point in the show where, you know, she'd lost Boone and, and she was starting to come into her own. So I don't know what it was, whether they just wanted to, you know, make way for some of the new characters with the tailies and add a new conflict now with her getting shot. But it always, to me, is just like such, not a wasted opportunity because there was something interesting and powerful that comes right. from it. I would have loved to have seen a what if, like what would they have done if they could have just kept a bit longer. Um, I do think people would have been more sold just maybe another few episodes or to the end of season two that she was around for just to see him, you know, say what he says to her and then really live true on that and continue to do things with her. And I don't know. I just, the reason I think people find it hard to get emotionally like blown back by that season six ending with them two to come together is because I just think they didn't have enough chance to show that in their time on the island. Uh, like you can get it, you can go, oh, that makes sense. It makes sense, but it's not like a Charlie or a Claire reunion or a Sawyer and Juliet, who you know they had a lot of time bonding. Right. Um. So uh, yeah, I feel like it makes sense, and I do like them as a pairing. And I, I think Nadia was the like the Helen, a bit like Locke was in love with Helen, but that didn't work out. I think Nadia was the same for Saeed. But it, I just wish that that we were more emotionally behind the two of them, that we had more time to get invested because they showed so much promise, especially once we saw why Shannon needed and needed to be believed and have yeah. Saeed or someone like Saeed come for her. Um, yeah. That's all I can say because well, uh, the writers did a great job with it. Undecided on it. <laughs> well, the writers did a great job with this because if she would have died a few episodes before this, eh, it's just Shannon. I mean, yeah, kind of. But you know, this episode did such a great job. Of, <laughs> yeah. Of, oh my god, I, I care about her. Whereas before, she was the selfish yeah. one, and you know, she did lose her brother and all the different stuff but it was like it wasn't where i was like i feel bad like she she, she wasn't she wasn't someone i was like oh, okay i if she got killed off i didn't care but this episode i was like oh don't kill her off and maybe it's sure. like, maybe i felt bad for for saeed too because saeed was obviously feeling a connection there and he, he's always seemed to have some bad luck with his like naughty yeah. he seems to have bad luck uh but i do like when uh, we come back to Anna Lucia, she's lost and Sawyer points it out, and then he says something about, it. oh, I don't care about Michael, such and such, and Michael hears it. You know, so there's that friction right there where Sawyer, and then Sawyer feels bad for, actually felt bad for saying it, I think. True, true. Yeah. I mean, it, he does say things out of, out of spite, but then he, again, he has a heart. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to hurt people, but yeah. bad move on his play. Echo returns. Uh, they're on the move again, uh, but then we go back to Shannon. Uh, so, uh, Saeed's going to get some water. The candle blows out, and she sees a wet wall again. Yes, yeah. So that brought just just tons of. I, remember, I just remember at the time tons of theories. Yeah, sure, sure. And what's your thoughts now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, at this point, it's like, you know, I, I it can't be smoky, right? Because smoky only takes the image of, right. of a dead body so it can't be smoky i mean that that was a theory back then but yeah later on when we found out what smoky could do but i yeah. i don't i still to this day don't know <laughs> I, don't well, I, know. Was, I, I think we had an answer in in one of the episodes where miss clue one of the others asks what michael when michael's taken to the others she asked michael has walt ever appeared in a place where he was wasn't supposed to be so Michael's like, what? And she just meant like, well, he said that he was halfway around the world, but did you ever see him, Michael? So I think that that means they worked out Walt, Walt is 
special and Walt has okay. abilities of some kind of astral projection. This is the thing with the show. The answers are never laid out. They say things that you can put two and two together. And I think that's the closest, I mean, I've come to, to getting an answer and I'm happy with that. Like we All knew right. from that he could do things. And yeah, he, so yeah. the fact that we see him here and another time we hear the other say that he's got an ability to do that, I'm like, that's my answer. <laughs> he's, yeah. I can live with that. Yeah. I don't, have, I, I don't know anything better. I think it's a combination of he's just been kidnapped and he, He's kind of a, I always think of him as a bit like one of the X-Men or someone like with his powers. Like he doesn't know what he's doing. Like, and right. maybe it's linked to being in state of stress or emotion and where he just, you know, he can do these things without thinking. And I think he thinks back to maybe to Vincent or the camp. And I think it's uh, Shannon because Shannon has visit Vincent. Um, right. And also I think because Shannon's kind of the only, or one of the few that probably is not really paying too much attention to the group in a way. Like right. she's lost Boone and she's got Saeed, but she's probably in her own little head, like in her in her, in her mind away from everything. So she's maybe psychically not got anything filling her head. And that's why she's vulnerable to whatever psychic communication Walt's doing. Um, like he can sense uh, someone that could help her. And she's someone also feels like she needs to be helped. Like we see in this episode, she feels alone and like no one's on her side. So it makes sense that there's a but kind she of wants psych- to be, she wants to be believed. Yes, and Walt's giving her a chance to be an active part, uh, an active part in the community. So it, 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 you can start digging in there, and I think that's what it is. I think that she's looking for someone to say you need to help, and Walt is the one calling out because he's been kidnapped, and it, it reaches through to her, and she has a little mini quest to go on as a result. Do you blame Saeed for not believing her right away? Is it because, or is he just? No, I, don't. I, mean, I don't. I don't see her. I don't see him. Yeah, I think they've all seen weird things on the island. Like, it always kind of made me laugh that no one ever just said, "Like, let's all sit down and talk. Let's just talk." What we've all seen, like, okay, I've seen my dad. Okay, I've seen a horse. I've seen a baby in a crib in the sea. Like, can we all just talk? You know, no, they don't. They don't, they don't communicate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're too busy. Yeah, they're, they're too busy walking around on their uh, their iPhones to pay attention to what's going on in the world. Uh, I, I like how Charlie comes over to see what's going on, and then Claire comes over with the baby, and he goes, "Why'd you wake Aaron up?" Yeah, and he seems to know more about the baby than Claire, and that becomes an issue later on uh, in the episode. Then we go to see mm-hmm. Shannon. She's teaching ballet, and she gets a call from her stepmom about her dad. And we are we had saw in the earlier episode. Uh, a episode, couple episodes before that, his dad was in an accident and he he dies, and she finds out she di- he dies, and um, that just sends her on a path to where her whole life is going to change. Yeah, and it's the same accident that um, nearly paralyzed Jack's uh, ex-wife, as we see him walk by. Right. So another incident of where these lives were all crossing even before the island. And yeah. how yeah, they, they, they all influenced each other's journeys. So she lost her father, which took her down that path. Jack gained a wife and a, a kind of a storyline, which led him to being, you could say, a man who didn't want to believe anymore. So all these things right. are interesting when you look at how they all, like a domino, led from one thing to another. And yeah, for Shannon, it's really the beginning of the downfall of her. And she never really <laughs> ever had any light in her story after that, which is just sad. Because <laughs> before um, that, because before this all happened, she probably was a pretty, probably caring person. I think she was, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I think she was just probably a normal teenager. So yeah. she, she probably was a bit preppy. She probably was a bit bratty. She probably was all sorts of things. Right. But she was a good person, you know, and she, yeah. you know, was trying to find a way in the world. And, you know, like, I think that what faults that we saw in Shannon in season one were probably true, but they were very enlarged and exaggerated by what kind of trauma she'd been through. Right. So I, the whole sort of Paris Hilton uh, archetype, which they based her on, I, I read the the treatment of when they were coming up with the characters. They said, oh, we'll base this character on Paris Hilton. 
<laughs> okay, cool. That's an interesting archetype in a culture today to explore because there are people like that, you know? Right. Let's see what that character would do. Like, how would they deal with the pressures of being on an island? Like, And, you know, there are some that are probably the most exaggerated form of that and some that aren't. I think she probably was one that was probably in the middle somewhere. But the ex extremes, extenuating circumstances that the stepmother shoved down onto her Right. She became like the person she hated because I think she didn't have anyone that thought she was worth it, worthy of anything. Um, and I just think that's an interesting idea in of itself that you you give up on yourself because no one cares. No one thinks you're good enough. So you stop caring and it hurts the more you do care. So um, it's just so fascinating that there's this very complicated reason behind what seemed like such a, a one dimensional character for such a long time right because you see her in the you know boone's trying to yeah. get her to help out you know she's just she's sunbathing she's she doesn't care about anybody but herself but you see okay that, like you said that there's a reason why she became that person and it's interesting to re-watch though because that's all how you're perceiving it on the first time of watching and for the most part the facts are there but there are lines that she gives in season one even back to the pilot where she uses phrases about, oh, I feel worthless or someone needs to believe in me. There are right. like little trigger lines or trigger things that kick her off. I think Boone says it to her just before they go to get the transceiver and get the French signal and they hike up the mountain. He says something and it really pisses her off. And it's something along the lines of like, you've not helped anyway, you're being worthless. Right. And, it, and all on a surface, her demeanor is the very Paris Hilton archetype. But everything she's saying, when you've watched the abandoned episode and you go back and rewatch all of these episodes, you're like, I actually see some logic and sense in what she's saying here. And I, knowing what she's been through, I can see why she's acting out and why she seems so um, aggressive in her demeanor. Right. Um, so it's like they've loaded it all into the dialogue back in the episodes you've already watched. But you're not going to unlock that until you've really seen the backstory. And then you come out with fresh eyes and you're like, whoa, it was staring me in the face the whole time. Yeah, wow. exactly. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Again, that's the beauty of this show. We've said yeah. it like, probably a hundred times this episode, but it's, it is what it is. I like how she goes and gets, she wants to find uh, Michael's stuff, Michael and Walt's stuff. She gets one of Walt's shirts and get Vincent saying, okay, let's go, uh, let's go find Vincent. But then she goes and she finds she lands at Boone's gravesite. Yeah, and that yeah. just derail, that just derails her. I mean, it just because um, it, it's only been what ten days, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, it's not been long. The, the a lot of bad stuff happens with Shannon and Boone quite quickly. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, I mean, in a, in a darkly comic way, um, but yeah, it that, that's an interesting one that it kind of takes her there and. I think it's it's kind of a it's just a, a poetic thing really in the episode. Like I think they know that they're gonna kill Ka Shannon's character off as as the writers. So they're like, we before we do this, we need to really round out her relationship with Boone uh, m as well as her relationship with herself. And you know, I don't think there was ever really a lot of closure with Boone uh, and her. Like Boone did get over how he felt about her and grew to care for her in a good way and not in a weird way anymore. <laughs> but <Right. laughs> he never got to say goodbye to her and there was kind of a lot of unsaid, uh, a lot of things that weren't really resolved there. Right. And, you know, and I think that's because Shannon's still the one alive. She's the one that has to bear that. She's got to reflect on that. So I really think it was a fantastic thing to, even though he's obviously a dead character, but not just to have her be sad, a funeral but to have a final moment where she is you know she's trying to go and find walt and but it's really about her trying to prove her value but a big barrier to that is i think she's still not she's not at peace with how she'd maybe behaved with her brother um and how he treated her so i do think on a sort of poetic level the reason she can't find walt uh, or doesn't get to that end point as she does is because she's first got to actually make her bed with the kind of situation she had right. with Boone and I think that was a nice scene to put in there even 
if there's not a lot of dialogue, but just to see that she's still really shaken by that. And um, yeah. It's also a life lesson that you, you, you know, people you care about, be careful how you end it with them. Yeah. Because mm. it can be gone, you could be gone like that, you know, and Definitely. then you, you don't want to, you want to leave with the, you know, yeah. I I hate you because I always I always tell my wife if we fight you know we, we don't fight as much as we used to but we do that every now and then we'll have a you know spat and we we'll, mm -hmm. you know lay in bed I I go you know what I could die tonight mm -hmm. and she'll it's that's how I, that's how I get her to say okay fine <laughs> yeah 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 it's true yeah I mean, it's just something I mean I wouldn't want to go like I said if, you know I've had arguments with people and you never want to leave it that you know on a, crappy way where it's like you know what if something did happen to them is like that's the last thing that they i said to them was i hate them or something like that it's so so I, I think this episode was a life lesson also the way they were setting it up uh we have aaron go ahead no i was just saying that that's also why i think they did the sideways thing in season six i think because i yeah. think for the most part a lot of characters did did have a satisfying character arc in in the show while they were alive and then they died but like I think even there are still a lot of things. Like I said, Boone had a good character arc, but there were some things that, you know, there were unsaid between him and her and Shannon and her with him right. and a lot of the other characters. So I do think that sideways thing was a way for them to show that whether you believe in it yourself or not, that the idea at least that you can believe in something like that in a place where you can try to kind of come to peace with whatever you didn't say in your life. I think that's why they did it. I think it's because they were aware of the fact that people love these characters. And for the most part, a lot of these characters did really have a story which ended without a lot of resolution. Um, so I just think it was a hopeful way to go because uh, um, even with Shannon, who has a good arc in this story, like I said, there's just so much unfulfilled potential and a lot of things left unsaid um, by the end of the actual life story let alone sideways. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's why they gave us the sideways in a way to make us feel a better. <laughs> and then, then we have a scene between Aaron Locke, I mean, Aaron, Aaron crying, but Claire and Locke. And I think it was more, it's setting up different storylines down the road, but you know, yeah. she has trouble. Locke says, you got to swaddle her. You know, people, I think, I think it was, uh, Charlie said to, uh, Locke said, you know, well, she wasn't going to keep the baby because if you're not, I, I think if you're going to give the baby up for adoption, you're probably not doing, you're not reading books and you're not doing this. You're not, you're not doing your homework on what it takes to raise a child. She never intended to raise yeah. a child. It was going to be raised by another. Uh, but, yeah. uh, but I, I do yeah, like and that's what later. Definitely. Like yeah. said. But Claire tells Locke, uh, oh, you know, Charlie's really religious. He's carrying around the Virgin Mary statue. Of course, we know what's in the Virgin mm -hmm. Mary statue. And, and Locke goes, huh. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that comes to play later on. We go cool. back to the flashback. Boone shows up at the funeral. You know, and then Boone, you know, Sh Shannon's been cut off. And her mom, stepmom is like, oh, no, Shannon, all you ever done is slept 16 hours. She really doesn't have any respect for Shannon. No. None whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of feels like for a character that was so un unlike like Shannon, the, be the best way to make her more likable is give her a very unlikable nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's even nowhere near as bad. Um, and that's it. Like, okay, maybe it's a cheap tactic, but do you know what? Like, I think it's interesting. And I think it goes to show that Boone was the one that was the favorite child. Right. And you kind of get that with Boone, you know? He wasn't really the most, like, he had a good heart. He had a heart of gold, but he was not the most equipped. And I think he was a bit of a, a, bit of a little rich kid that had everything given to him, really. He right. was no different than Shannon. Shannon was the one that just kind of got the middle finger shoved in her direction. Right, and exactly. When, when child is, is, you know, in a wealthy family and one child has everything and you for no reason have nothing, like, I, it really shows one who has a heart of gold and also has the ability to act on that kind of you know really gets to do everything and looks down on the person that doesn't but yeah he's not really noticing really okay I, I think he says in this oh she's she'll come around and and, and right. chance like uh it's easy for you to say it's your mom and you know so yeah, she offered me a job she offered me a job i couldn't turn it down yeah. 
it's sad and it sucks. And I always wonder whether that's what Boone would have said to her is because he says Shannon, tell Shannon before he dies. I wonder whether he would have wanted to say I'm sorry or something. I I, I, right. I I'm sorry I dropped the ball. That that that's what I kind of want to imagine he said because it's the only thing that I feel like would be a fantastic way to round out his character. But obviously at that point, you know, we didn't know her backstory just before he died. No. But if he and that would have been a fantastic way to round him out because that really is the crux of it. He did let her down, and that's why I think she, you know obviously the stepmom but he was the closest ally she had and right as we see at the end she didn't get the help and um he could have had a chance to at least say i'm sorry and it would have really turned the leaf over properly at least but hey yeah, yeah, because she, the one, she called him captain america and all this different stuff yeah. and it, yeah. it, it, and you see it in the flash she she is getting the raw into the deal i mean her dad there's no way her dad her dad would have said yeah i'm yeah, leave it up to your stepmom for the money. But I mean, they had a living trust, but I, I'm assuming that the dad would have said, would assume that the mom, the stepmom was going to help out. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I get what the stepmom says about her finding her way, but there's a way to do it. It's not going to completely ruin it. Like, right. like you said, she gave Boone it. She gave, well, here, Boone, here's a bit, here's a job with a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. I she, mean, it, Shannon, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go work. Yeah, there's, there's there's a difference between it and just completely making someone, you know, bankrupt and not have any money or any way to support themselves. You got to give someone a start, and um, that's, plus no, she, that's she, got the, she got the internship, which was, you know, not easy. Yeah, but then she can't because Boone's moving out and she has nowhere to stay and all of that. Yeah, it's just right. it's a mess. It's a real mess that, that she lands in. And then, then there's this scene that always drives me crazy every time I see it. You got Sawyer who's he, he's he's struggling, and he's using the sword or the weapon that Echo gave him as a as a cane, and he's got to lean way over because it's too short. But you have all these people. Yeah, Libby has a hockey stick weapon, and all these people have sticks. Why did they swap out with Sawyer? Say here, use the stick. This will because it's hard to walk and bend over, especially when you're not feeling well. Right. Yeah, true, true. All, all these smart people, and no one said, "Hey, let me." You're not going to be able to use this anyway. Here, use yeah. use my Jesus stick or use my hockey stick. I, I never, I've never gotten that. No, no, interesting things I hadn't thought of before. I don't know why <laughs> it just always bugs me because you sit there and see him leaning over, and I'm like going, "That's got to hurt worse." <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Echo wants to take a shortcut to help Sawyer, and and this. Of course, makes Anna Lucia really happy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just uh, want to get back as fast as possible. Yeah. But he, he's like, you know, uh, he's, he's he'll die. I got to get him back. And Anna Lucia doesn't care. Uh, Anna Lucia tells Jen and, and, and Michael to stop talking. This is where we talked about earlier where Michael says, what happened to you people? Why why are you like this? Mm. And she does. Yeah. She, she gives a brief. Did she give a brief? uh she did tell why, you know, they were afraid of the others. So, you know, on this day they came and they took three. The next day they didn't, they didn't come for two weeks and they took nine. And so I think Michael's starting to realize they went through a lot more than we did. Yeah. She tells everything that we come to eventually see in the other 40 days episode, skimming, skimming over like the little details. So, yeah, they definitely by that point can get why. And it does make me wonder why they didn't say sooner, but I... I do think it's also because they just wanted to be sure of who they were first as well. Right. Um, that's what I can imagine. Um, you can you can see why there was distrust with yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Lano Sia's group because, you know, what they had gone through. Yeah. Um, we find out that uh, Shannon has been accepted for the internship, but her rent checks are bouncing. Her rent checks bouncing, all the stuff. She can't figure out why. That's when she talks to her mom. Sabrina has cut her off. Yeah. And to, cut, and to cut her off without telling her either, that that's even colder, I think. Oh, completely. Yeah, and I do think that's it. Like, like I said about them giving Shannon a like a very formidable foe almost in her story. Right. Um, it, it kind of is like rubs off on Shannon, I think, a little bit, this coldness um, that she's been treated so coldly by, like, by the world, by the people that should be family, I think she becomes just as cold, um, if not colder, 
um, because of how cold her stepmother was to her, I think. Right. And I think she sees that as a, oh, a strong, empowered, uh, career, successful woman. And how, like, I know that her sitting on the, on, on the beach getting a suntan doesn't exemplify that. That's not the point. Like, that is her giving up on herself when she does things like that. But her sort of, she's always, she was always very, um, like, she stood her ground and was very defiant uh, when people would argue with her or tell her what to do, even if she wasn't doing much. And I think that defiance and sort of coldness and sort of strength of character comes from having seen or modeled herself on someone like the Sabrina mother character. This right. just very like forthright, shrewd person gets what they want, but goes about it in a way that's completely, you know, just really unpleasant. Um, yeah, it, and I think it, she, she tries to make herself into a strong person or have qualities like that, but it's not helping her. Um, no, plus she just lost her. She just lost her dad. She didn't get to say goodbye to him because it, he died yeah. in a automobile yeah. accident, and and it's almost similar to what happened with Boone. And yeah. so the, the stepmom could have been a little nicer. That's all. I, that's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah, we have Char Charlie and uh, tells uh, Charlie and um, and Locker playing backgammon. And he tells uh, Claire has to, a lot to learn about being a mom. And Locke says, well, that's a lot to say from a heroin addict. Yes. And yeah. he says, recovering addict. Yeah, they're stirring the pot for the episode to come. Right. And it's that's what they do great in the show is, is keep those plates spinning, even if it's not their time for their episode. So it's all getting, all getting going. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Charlie. Uh, yeah, it's not my favorite season for him. <laughs> no. uh, Sawyer collapses, and this is where, you know, he tells Michael, he goes, I would have left you behind. Yeah. Because Michael, Michael's, yeah. Michael's not going to leave him behind. There you go. That's it. It's interesting that, like, Michael's character is, I, he's a good guy. He is. He's just, he does really weird things down the line in a really bad way, and it, this is why it really bothers me, as I've mentioned already, because like a line like that just shows he's got a really good side to him besides just wanting to take care of Walt. Like he's, he's a good guy. So I'm like, let's, let's just like, just quote that to anyone that thinks he was the worst person in the world. Yeah. It, it, again, because he had no reason because Sawyer didn't, wasn't coming to yeah. help him. And so like, well, Sawyer said, I would have left you behind Michael. And it just, yeah. you know, but Sawyer passes out. Anna Lucia says they need to keep moving. Michael asks Echo to help him build a stretcher. And that, that just, it, 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 there's a scene where they have an overhead shot where you see Anna Lucia just putting her hands to her head in total frustration going, ah! <laughs> yeah. She wants yeah, to get yeah. out. Of and to be fair, she's the leader and her job is to get the people safe. But yeah. anyway, uh, mm -hmm. Saeed is uh, telling... Uh, was it telling Walt not to, uh, telling Shannon that Walt's not here? Uh, that site says, uh, they Shannon says, We found the bottle, we found the bottle with all the messages in it. And anyway, we see them carrying uh, Sawyer up the hill. Uh, they get to the top, and Analysia notice that Cindy is gone. Yeah, now I gotta be right honest, I always thought that Cindy was an other. Now I know she's on the plane, but I, I just said. I, I, it's interesting theory because I, I just said well, how did she how did she disappear I kind of like it actually because I do so there's no way to say it's right or wrong and I have always believed she just was a passenger it makes sense but I kind of like the theory and I just there's there's literally I want to say it's wrong and I think we're basically led to assume that she was taken. I do always think that's what we're meant to think, but I, I, that you say that now, and I'm like, that's that's actually quite a cool idea because we don't have many examples of characters who were on the flight, who um, were part of, you know, with Richard or Ben or anyone, right. and we know it kind of was an accident because, effectively, it was that he didn't press the button and he didn't, you know. You know, the electro electromagnet went crazy and it pulled the plane right. out of the sky. But, like, still it was meant to be that the people were on that plane. I, this is where I get confused because Jacob wanted them there. But at the end of the day, 
it just came down to a complete fluke accident. People don't say this, but like it was a fluke accident. So I don't know whether Jacob had a hand in somehow making what's it, Kelvin leave the station at the same I, time. I, 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 I say it had something to do with he somehow orchestrated Kelvin. He had to have. I mean, I don't, I don't think, I, of course, you know, Jacob could have brought anybody he wanted to the island. Yeah, I just. It was always built out to be a big reveal moment at the end of season two that the plane crashed just because of the electromagnet going crazy and the button not being pushed. Right. But by the end of the show, we find out that Jacob wanted these specific people there. So it couldn't just be a complete accident. This is where it's a little gray for me, a gray area, and doesn't neatly line up in a satisfying way. And I can't imagine that Jacob just had this ability to know that by chance, they would be on the right plane at the right moment that he didn't press accidentally miss the button. Like, right. But in any case, besides all that, the idea of Cindy being on the plane, if she was handpicked to be a bit like an Alana, maybe like just, you know, there to make sure the candidates are on the plane. Yeah. Okay. Because eventually, as we do see, she gets, she joins the others in New Otherton and we see her at the temple eventually. She's still there. And she always seemed quite, yeah, um, no, I yeah. might not. Bother. Either that, or, I, either that, or she went willingly because the the others had the kids, and she was always concerned about the kids. Yeah, I, I'm not sure But I, she would say, oh, "Guys, they've got the kids." Guys, look, <laughs> she'd shout like you wouldn't walk yeah. off. I think she was either she was kidnapped like super quick, and I have no idea how they did that. But we didn't see how long they were taking to climb up that hill, like. That could have taken at least half an hour, and that's enough right. time. Like, it didn't look at steep hill, so yeah, they weren't doing a good job of checking if, who was on, you know, around them. But it's exactly. possible. But um, uh, I, I but get your idea, really. It's kind of interesting. But Anna Lucia blames Echo. You wanted to save him. Now she's gone. Yeah. yeah. Then well, they, all the, they all hear the they hear the they hear the whispers. Yes. Yeah. And Anna Lucia says, "Run." <laughs> yeah. Which we now know were just people that were dead on the island and couldn't move on. So that's nothing to do with the others anyway, which is interesting. No, but it was, it's funny how that was always a theory, though, for the longest yeah. time. Until they finally explained what the whispers were. Uh, we go back. Shannon's packing. Boone is leaving. Uh, he comes in. He, he offers her some money, but he's because she wanted to stay with him. Well, I've got a job with my mom. I'm not going to be there. And, and yeah. he, she just goes, forget it. I'm done. I do. Yeah, this I, is a great this is a great scene where you see, I feel like this is where the transformation comes from the Shannon in the backstory. We see at the beginning to the Shannon we know in season one, just her whole demeanor, her facial expression. She looks, she just, she's cold as ice at this point, her expression. And it, it connects the dots. That's who we came to know in the beginning of the show. She was this very unpleasant, bitchy faced character <laughs> but now you get why it's because she's just angry and i just love that you it comes full circle and you know now who she was and why she became that way well the final uh, scene with this of uh, the flashback and the final scene that we see in this episode they tied it in so well together you because you, you know you see shannon she falls and and Saeed comes over he goes no i don't pick me up i don't i don't want you picking me up she was, I want you to believe. I want you to believe in me. And yeah. the same thing she wanted from, yeah. from Boone and all the others, yeah. everything else that was going on in her life. Yeah, the proxemics of her on the floor packing her stuff, came coming in and leaving her on the floor, basically. Yeah, and then her in the next shot, coming into shot, falling, and him coming to pick her up. It's, 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 this is it. Like, this is why I do feel like, Shannon's character as short a time she had they did a beautiful job in really telling something really powerful and um poetic I think like they didn't do that with all of the characters that no. were in for like a season or two like we got some a few additional characters in um later seasons like the freighter characters that got some backstory like they probably got one episode like Shannon did but I feel like they did a really beautiful, uh, like emotional story with Shannon that they didn't do with some of those other sort of smaller characters. So um, it feels like they weren't really, really proud of, of the story they were doing. And like, they really were wanting to make it impactful. Uh, and like you said, like, the way they shot it is very clever and 
it, it leads to that climax moment that you were just going to mention about the way he does see it. Because we talked about earlier, so he tells Shannon he loves her. They, then they hear the whispers yeah. and they both see Walt. Yeah. And, and for that moment, because Shannon takes off after him, and I think Saeed is just in shock. Number one, he's like, well, she was right the whole time. But how, how am I seeing Walt? And there's just that one delay. And we hear a gunshot and Shannon's been shot. Yeah, and yeah. that's the that's the end of the episode, and you see Anna Lucia like oh, because you see everybody else's face too, Michael and um, and Jen realize that oh no, she shot Shannon. Mm. Yeah, so. yeah, that's just, just uh, it. It happens so quick. It kind of, it, and that's it. It's it's designed in such a way that you are absolutely at that point just so feeling for the character for right. Super Shannon, that you're 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 literally your wind is taken out of you literally when that happens. I, I can I still get it now when I watch it because it's just like you can't do that. Like it's almost like they break a rule in writing in a way. Do you know what I mean? Like they yeah. have like these trust with writers and they shouldn't they can't do this if they've set this up then they wouldn't but they do and it it literally is just gut wrenching that they can get you so invested and to have a character so raw and in need. Uh, and we're like, we, we care for you because now we understand you. And yeah, right. we're like, <laughs> but it's kind of poetic. Like I said, it's like the writers were saying, like, doesn't matter. You hated her for all these episodes. So we shouldn't treat you now that you like her. Like, so, like it's on your, it's on you that you didn't make the most of the time you had to watch her. Now, if you're mad at us, be mad at you for not liking her for all that time. That's kind of feel like what they're doing is to like make you realize your own kind of lack of well, insight you, and yeah. But you also see down. you also see Saeed looking at Shannon. Uh, it's not Shannon. Looking, he's holding Shannon, but he's looking at Anna Lucia, and you're thinking, oh my god, he's going to kill Anna Lucia. Mm. He's gonna yeah, well, he's gonna snap her neck because he's just he just shot, you know. But it, and I know a lot of people blame Anna Lucia. I'm like going, you can't because what had just happened? Cindy went missing. They're running. They're they're hearing the whispers. They're they're in a panic, and someone comes running towards them. And and Echo had said that the, they were close by. So and everything yeah, she yeah. done. So you can't really blame her for doing what she did. It's a tragic accident. It's really just. I have never seen it other than anything other than that. And it it kind of um this is the one thing I actually was thinking of is with the with it's with Anna Lucia that this kind of stays with her for the rest of the season, I feel. Um, it does, yeah. And it does, you know, and I think she has a conversation with Saeed about it later and says that she's really sorry. And he he you know, I don't think he forgives her, but he, he's like, look, don't don't be because it was an accident. Like He's never going to like be okay with it, but he, he knows there's no point beating her up about it because she can't control it. Right. Um, but, and I, I always felt like it would have been nice. Um, Cause I know Annalisa was in the sideways world for a little bit. We see her quickly, but I think it would have been a nice end to the character to write her that we see her with Hurley. Um, you know, the scene in, in the very end, Hurley's, reuniting Saeed with Shannon. But right. just this episode before uh, she pops up and Hurley's like, oh no, what is she coming? And Desmond's like, no, she's not ready to come. I think it would have been cool if he says, oh yeah, she's gonna go and help you with Saeed. And in the scene we see with uh, Hurley and Saeed, she comes along and she's there to help them reun reunite would, with Shannon. And that would be, that would be a nice thing. It would have been, or she was helpful in facilitating to get Shannon to that situation, to the spot they meet. And it would have been her like I was. I'm here because my last unfinished business is is putting you two back together because I took her away from you. Like I think that would have been a really cool way to. That definitely would have been an aha moment where people go, oh. We wouldn't have known what the sideways was at that point, but as soon as we did, we'd be like, ah, now it makes sense why she would want to do that because right. when she got killed by Michael and she had that moment with uh, where she doesn't shoot Ben and she's like I can't do that anymore. It would make sense that when she died, that was still something that was bothering her. Um, it did bother me that we never saw more of her in that sideways thing, and they were like, "Oh no, she's not ready." I definitely feel like 
that moment she kills Shannon in this episode was a huge thing in the season. Oh, and, yeah. Um, it, it presented a big... Um, she kind of overcomes it and says it to Saeed, but there would have been something to explore there, at least in some way in the sideways, because they made such a big deal of it in this season. Right. Um, it really was. And it, it was a big moment in the episode. <laughs> yeah, it was. A huge moment. <laughs> Well, you said she died tragically. Then it got me thinking. Oh, her dad died tragically. Boone died tragically, and Shannon died tragically. Tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. Yeah. 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 And it's interesting. They were the, like the youngest characters uh, right. in a way. There was he's a, he's a little kid, but Boone and Shannon were you know like early twenties or something, and most of the others were probably a bit older. Right. So it was like this idea of. Um, you know, they just weren't able to hack it in a way. They were still a bit too green and not sort of kind of savvy enough to take the island life or something. Yeah. Um, and but it was also they were a bit like an emblem of the the very teen audience that maybe they were trying to reach out to. The show had so many different characters of different ages and backgrounds. Right. I do whether Boone and Shannon would have brought in a lot of younger viewers. And then as the show was going on, they realized maybe those teen sort of audiences weren't keen on the show. So maybe they thought, oh, well, we, no one, none of that demographic wants to watch it. Why should we keep those characters? Um, I never thought about that. That's a great point. Yeah, you know, And I do it just kind of, that's what I, I've started to think is what they might. Be. I, I can't argue with it because I never thought about that. <laughs> so yeah. that's a good, that's yeah, a good point. Yeah. But yeah, it just skews what the, the show's image is a bit because it, it had so many avenues it could have gone down and it could have been more like that in a way but they they obviously wanted to show that all the characters on the island had to mature uh and had to grow and become more you know at one with right. themselves and i feel like boone and shannon being so young they they did have some tragedy in their past but they kind of reached the end point in their story and there was no adult next step they could take them in so I, right. I do think that they were running into problems with what to do with them as characters um but in hmm. any case they still had interesting contributions to the whole lost mythos they'll, they'll um, always be remembered in the lost world yeah they were like the first tragedies uh in in a way and well, well, boone, I think di well boone dying showed that they, they would kill off a character true and and I think Shannon was that as well, but Shannon also was on a, a redemption arc because Boone was always very good and everyone liked him. But right. I think Shannon was the first major character that had a real, oh, she's this person? So, oh, I never thought that. We got that with Jin, but then they didn't kill Jin. So it was like, it was the first time we got a character that really fully changed and then that was their story done. And it happened like with Annalicia, with Charlie, like they just kept doing it and it, Spoke right. to the theme of, you know, you working through your issues and then you move on, and that's the end. I think people that's what well, that's why people used to think that the whole island was purgatory because right. it would always seem uh, always uh, ironic that these characters that were having these cathartic moments in their in their centric episodes would then die. <laughs> they're like, oh, so is it that they're they're actually going to heaven and they're no longer working some through people their still issues? Believe it. Some people still believe it's purgatory. Yeah, and it fits because in a figurative way, that's kind of right. what's happening. Right. Uh, but I'm happy to be like, it's figurative, but it's not literally what's happening. Right, exactly. Um, but then then that makes sense why they would want to do the cider as well, because they were already exploring the idea. So then why are people so mad at the sideways? Is it more of how they did it or just the fact that they did it? I, did, I just think at that point, they, 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 I think people felt they could have answered more questions yeah, but to me, yeah. I was ha I was happy with most everything they answered, and again, we can still talk about this. I mean, we've talked for almost two hours. I know. About two exactly. hours, so. And yeah. what other show could you you? I mean, I keep saying this. You you can't do that with other shows. It's true. Yeah, I was watching the leftovers this year just as uh, a bit of extra homework to get an idea of another show that Lindelof had written, and and again, a show that's powerful with lots of interesting ideas and really well-written characters, but so many big questions and not many answers. So he yeah. he's just a writer that is drawn to asking questions, but not necessarily given the answers. So 
I, after watching it, I was like, you know what? It sold me even more on Loving Lost. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, because it just shows that that's what he's, he's a storyteller that's drawn to that. And that doesn't make great me mad. Story, great storyteller. <laughs> I, I respect it because I don't want to have to have my hand held. Life isn't like that. And if you want your stories and your entertainment to give you everything and be like soft, uh, like a popcorn experience, yeah. then just that's not for you. That's not yeah. what Lost watch, is. That's watch Y Five O or another generic yeah. show. Yeah, that, yeah. That it just gives you a, you know a cookie cutter show. I, yeah. I I I like shows like this that make you think and that make you go, huh? Yeah. And like you said we're t we've had a conversation here a couple times. Like yeah, I didn't think about that. Didn't think about that. And again, a show that's been off the air for almost ten years. It's just I mean, been. I mean, it, it, been a, it was I enjoyed talking about these two episodes with you. It was been it's been great. Yeah, it has been really good. I think whatever answers they ever do give, they there are things you can piece together. And I'm always right. more happy and respecting that they're not like thinking we're stupid. Like some of the answers they did give, where they just shoved it, I was like, oh, the way they wrote that line, ugh. it yeah. just was like it just felt like giving the answer and it. Some of the lines I can think of in season six, which I'm fine with, but on another level, I'm like, didn't feel very lost in a way. They just said right. the answer. No, don't. No, that ruins it. <laughs> um, yeah. But in any case, th those were written in because some people need to have them explicitly well, I think stated. You mentioned the leftovers. I think Lindelof learned, but in the leftovers, I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to be pressured into doing it. This is my story. You can live with it. You can not live yeah. with it. But this is my story. I'm not going to be bullied into doing it the way Leftovers. So I, I even said Leftovers. I said after season two, I said I would be done because I thought season two was just perfect television. I, I said don't come back. Don't do a third season. The third season came back and he was just as good, probably as the second season. I go okay. I was wrong, but I yeah, think he no, learned, I, think, I think he learned a lot from Lost. Yeah, and you know, I felt like he he was looking for a story in response to the feedback from Loss that the public right. had given to say, look, this wasn't a complete lightning in a bottle moment. It wasn't by accident you didn't get these lack of answers. This is actually what I like doing. So, you know, not f you, but this yeah. is just what well, this is me. This is the kind of things I like to do, and like what I want to as an artist create. I want to leave you with a question. I want to leave you to wonder. Um, and I respect that. I want a show that's going to engage in that way. Yeah. And as well as having great pulpy genre things in them, like time travel or like Sawyer and Jack butting heads, like, and beating each yeah. other silly. Like it has so many things that are just entertaining as well as some things that are just, you know, like good pieces of art, like, in there as well so great show i can't say any more <laughs> <laughs> anyway i'm glad i'm glad we finally got together this was this was great yeah it's been really okay. interesting i'm, I'm uh, sad i'm sad for the rest of you i only got to see my ugly face but uh we'll, I'm sorry we didn't we'll definitely have you on again if you have time because this was this was interesting this was yeah fantastic. yeah no i'm i'm gonna get my webcam working so there can be a grand reveal of who it is <laughs> behind the curtain. Well, this will be up later on tonight. Uh, again, thank you for joining me in this journey of the three watch. It's been, like I said, uh, this was, it just, it was two hours and it flowed by. I just was like, great. this was a great conversation. But anyway, guys, that's it. We'll be back next Monday. That's all I got. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.